Hi, I'm Susan Shaner with Community Forum, and today I have the great pleasure to have Sharon Ruckman, who is a composer, and she hails to us from the Litchfield County area. Welcome, Sharon. Thank you very much. Um, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. And um, I know you're a contemporary, you do contemporary chamber music, is that well, right? Well, it's, it's classical. classical. Sometimes they call that classical contemporary, but it's, it's okay. primarily classical, and chamber music is really... Uh, what I mostly do are trios and quartets and duets and small ensembles. Okay. That's so, you know, I was looking at your website and it says um, that you do music for the piano, the cello, the violin, the viola, the flute, the right. oboe, the bassoon, the clarinet. That's a lot of instruments. Right. Clarinet. It is a lot. And different combinations. Wow. Um, and I've actually, the uh, largest piece that I wrote, I think, uh, was uh, really uh, it's consisted of seven different instruments. But primarily I deal with, or I should say I compose for uh, trios and duets and uh, string quartets. I'm very interested in that also. Okay, so this is really interesting. So tell us a little bit about your background. I mean, how did okay. you come to this? Where are you from? What was your education around this? Okay. Uh, I graduated from New England Conservatory of Music in Boston. Mm -hmm. That's where I got my Bachelor of Music. Um, and then I uh, moved on to Yale School of Music, where I was at graduate school. I got my master's in music there. And believe it or not, I was actually not a theory major or composer. I spent a lot of time uh, performing. I was actually a voice major in graduate school and in undergraduate school. And I did a lot of piano accompanying uh, for some of the uh, performances, uh, recitals, and for some of the classes that, or lessons that uh, people had. So you started out majoring in voice, so do you It was sing? piano actually first. Piano, I started lessons at age eight. And uh, then I continued on with that. And then later on, as my voice matured, oh. I decided to take voice lessons. And so I always did both. And then in between, I was doing a little cello, uh, I mean, I love the, playing the cello, and I did it on and off over the years, uh, but it takes a tremendous amount of time, so therefore, um, I found that I just didn't have the time to really give uh, an, all my, my, everything that I had. So you started out playing the piano, then you went to yes. the cello, and then you started singing. So when you studied voice, was there a particular kind of music that you would, would sing, like opera? Yes. Or? yes, well I did some opera. I also did something called leader, which were songs, um, and leader is something that um, was given for Brahms, songs that Brahms wrote in Schubert and Schumann. Hmm. So it was basically classical music. That's what I mostly sang. Um, and uh, I had the fortune of singing in uh, some wonderful uh, groups. I was actually in the New England Conservatory Choir, but also in the summertime, I was at the Blossom Music Festival, and I had the fortune of being in a very small chamber choir of 16 voices uh, under the, con um, uh, actually Robert Shaw conducted that uh, particular oh. group. And then uh, I also was at the Ambler Music Festival, so I had the experience of being at a lot of different music festivals and um, had just great experience with all of that. Wow. So, so how did you come to actually writing music? Okay. Well, I have to say I've always been interested in theory. Um, it's just been always fascinating for me. And I've studied it as when I was studying piano and voice, I also studied theory. That was part of the, my background and my education. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I guess after raising a family, um, I guess it was in my blood, and I d decided I really needed to go back and do some more writing. And so, so uh, what, what, were you playing and, and doing all this while you were raising your family, or you kind of took some time I off? I did perform, and I did, uh, <laughs> I did play, um, so I always kept up with that. Yeah. But the uh, composition part of it came later on. And uh, like I said, when I was actually five years old, uh, I would just play around in the piano and I would write little melodies so I was always interested in writing melodies and um, but then about five years ago I decided that I wanted to go back to school I actually went back to the Yale School of Music and studied with a teacher I studied composition I had private uh, a pri it was a private study just recently uh, about five years ago. Wow. And then uh, we did a, I did a lot of uh, composing then. And then decided, uh, and she actually, the teacher moved to New York, and um, 
the way all of this actually started to come about hmm. was that I had a cello teacher who uh, had asked me to write uh, a duet for piano and cello. And it turns out that uh, I never played it with her, but I discovered that there was a cellist down the road from me in my town, and I, she had been living there for seven years. And I found you, about her through did, a, fr through a did, friend. You just sort of came upon this Through a cellist. friend. Uh, and this friend told me about this cellist living in town. I said, oh my God, I have to call her up. And um, her name is Mary Costanza, and who I play with now. And uh, we just hit it off. I mean, we really played well together. We, it, it, it was great. And um, so she played this first piece that I wrote, which was this piece for cello and piano. And, um, and then after that, things just started to move along. And I was writing, before I knew it, quartets and trios and duets. And I managed to uh, find some other musicians in the area, which um, actually some of them were from the Waterbury Symphony. And so those are the people that uh, I used to record uh, my so, CD. So, so when, you, when you write and you have other people play it, how do you, how do you go about finding people who will play your songs? Oh, um, well, uh, first of all, you have to trust that if you know a few musicians that you really like, very often they bring in some other musicians mm -hmm. that you may not know, but they have worked with them and they feel comfortable with them. So they come along and you just kind of take a chance, but most of the time they're, they're very good musicians. Mm -hmm. And uh, what you often have to do before you record is you have to really um, go into detail about what you're looking for in the piece and mm -hmm. what kind of uh, sound you want, what type of dynamics you want, just a, a lot of information about the piece that they need to know and you have to review that and so that it, it, it just, it, it, it comes to well, the I imagine, result in what you want. I imagine some of it is sort of a combination of right and left brain. I mean, some of it's sort of mathematical, but isn't it, some of it's emotional too that you want, A right? lot of it is emotional. Yeah. A lot of it is emotional. Um, I put a lot of my self into it um, and um, I and that's what I get the most thrill from is that I feel that my music has um, is inspirational and people have told me that they feel it's soulful mm -hmm. and uh, and it's very calming and um, and and that's what I want to get across so how do you get an idea for a, a creative piece like what's your creative process okay um, there's actually uh, two different ways uh, one is that very often um, and actually I have a number of these pieces on my CD where I've had an image in mind mm -hmm. and then I work from there and so for instance I have uh, this piece called Day of Play and Day's End which is about children playing and it really feels like that um, hmm. and then at the end when they're ready to go to sleep when they've totally wiped out from <laughs> playing on the, yeah. at the, on the playground uh, then they uh, then there's a calming part to the uh, to the end of this piece and it's because they're ready to doze off and and you feel that almost when you hear it um, I actually had that performed uh, there's something called the Women's Composers Festival in Hartford huh. and they played this piece yeah. um, it was they found their own musicians to play this piece um, it takes place every year so there's a women's um, composer yes. festival so there's a yes. lot of women composers around. in Connecticut in really? Connecticut. It's a very specific in Connecticut. Yes. That's interesting. Yes. So is it the summer? Uh, I think we did this in the, uh, good question, I'm not sure if we think we did it last spring. Hmm. Okay. When they have it, March or April. So you get an idea, so, so, so like you have an idea. playing, and, right. and then you just sort of play around on the piano, what would, right. what would sound and feel like it's playing? Right. Um, I do that. Um, I mean, I've had other pieces where it's about water, or this new CD that I've uh, just come out with called Arrival of Spring, and, and it really does feel like spring. It's a two-movement piece. Um, but besides the image part, I just go to the piano, and very often I just have these different melodic ideas or motifs. So you just sort of and play around? Just play around, I write them down, mm -hmm. and then very often I go back and forth with it. So I leave, I leave the room, then I go back again, yeah. and, and then I have to know after maybe listening to those melodies over and over again, either it sits well with me or it doesn't. And I know that if I'm still happy with it, 
um, you know, after a certain period of time, then I go with that. And then I uh, try to find other melodies that work with that. For instance, if I'm doing a three movement piece, uh, I have to come up with three yeah. main melodies. But I, I don't know, we, we haven't discussed this, but part of the writing process is working with a program called Finale, which is actually a notation program. And it's a computer program. Oh, really? And so that's how I so you plug write. in little notes and stuff? Is well, that that's how I write. I actually have yeah. uh, a keyboard. It's a synthesizer, ah. and it's hooked up to this uh, computer. And basically, since I'm a keyboard person, that's how I work. And um, very what happens so is you're not sitting there actually at the piano. You're on the computer. Well, at first I do go to the piano. I go back and forth to the piano to to, to get the that, ideas. This is modern composing, yeah. I guess. But and right <laughs> and so and so, but once I have those ideas, I very often even write the rest of the piece while I'm sitting in front of this finale program. But what's great about it is that you know you first start the program up and you decide which instrumentation you want to use and then if you say I feel like okay. writing something for oboe and flute and I kind of have something in my head it you can sets actually up pull the, up the oboe it sets up the score oh, for just the oboe and flute then uh, when the um, you know when I get the, the cue I actually play something and it all appears on the screen so, so because I, I read all these <laughs> these instruments you play, so yeah. I'm thinking you have all these instruments at home, but you don't. You have this. No, computer. these are these are actually they represent uh, and, and used by and played by musicians that I know. Yeah. Um, you know, and so I I only play a few of them, but uh, some of them are. As I said I would like to write for those okay. instruments, but so so why don't because you've it's sort of been building up. Okay. Why, why don't we listen to one of the pieces? Okay. So the piece that we're gonna can you tell us a little bit about the yes. piece we're gonna. Yes. Listen to? Yeah. Okay. This is called Sea Glass. Mm -hmm. And Sea Glass, I got the idea from, uh, of Sea Glass from this. We go to Maine mm -hmm. quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And I just thought about the, the, the beach and the water in Maine and the sea glass on the beach. And, um, you know, that's kind of what gave me the idea. And so that's what I. I, I decided to write, and there's some. There's a lot of uh, tranquil moments in this. Well, piece. you know, when we were trying to pick which song, mm -hmm. I grew up on the beach, and I picked a lot of sea glass. And when you said sea glass, I said, let's do that one. Okay. All right. So, do we have it? Are we okay to set it up? Okay. Let's let's play it. <laughs>
that was very pretty. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I was imagining myself um, walking along the beach picking up sea glass. Because, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I grew right. up on the beach, literally. My right. mom took us to the beach every day. Right. And I, of course, these days, you can't find a lot of sea glass. No, but in Maine, there's a lot of sea glass. <laughs> I can say, hey, they don't allow people to have glass on the beach, but I, I grew up right. with a huge sea glass collection. Right. Well, we get, as I said, in Maine, it's still abundant. Yeah. You know, it's still there. So. so you had one day on the beach and you just got this inspiration? I just thought of Maine. I mean, um, I don't know, you just get these images in your head and you just decide, or you can look at a picture and you get an idea about something. And I think that's where very often it starts. And sometimes it's just all of a sudden you're, without even thinking about it, you have a melody in your head. Yeah. And I find that the more you do it, the more you stimulate your brain. And mm -hmm. it just, it seems to be, it comes more frequently if you just do it um, you know, uh, it, there's a, a constant flow. If you if you sit down every day and you write, uh, it seems to come even more. So, you know, do you have ideas. a discipline in that way? Like, do you? I tr yes. So you write every day? Yes. I mean, I've been now away from it because I've been working on my second CD, and I've been spending a lot of time working on the recording part of it, mm -hmm. making sure that you know, and the editing part of it. Yeah. And it takes a tremendous amount of time. It, it took about five or six months. Oh, so okay. very, uh, it's very difficult to do both oh. because you really need a clear head when you're writing and yeah. when you're busy editing and doing all that other stuff it's very difficult so when you're to in the that. writing mode do you, what do you do like first thing in the morning or set aside like a couple hours or what's your sometimes I go all day um, but I always like to take a break because it's good to move away from it and then go back just like I guess any writer would mm -hmm, do mm -hmm. um, because when you go back to it it looks different yeah. the second time yeah you know? now how do you so um, how long does it typically take you to do a piece well, sometimes I'm lucky. I just kind of get it right out. I mean, like this piece for cello and piano, uh, I just made the decision to sit down, and within, I think, even a week, I had it. I had a two-movement piece. And very often, music goes like that. And then there are times where you just keep hitting the same bumps. Yeah. And, and you just, I don't know, it's just like one little section just throws you. So, so you said when you're in the writing mode, right. not production mode, you, you write every day, so it's just good to have that discipline because your mind right. knows, hey, get ready, I'm going to be writing. Right. But do you have days where you're, you're blocked or it's just not flowing? Um, I, I mean, I guess that happens, but I don't um, let myself... Um, be bothered by that, and I just. So if you have any day where it's not, it's not flowing, right. I mean, there are times, do but something? I don't give up. I, what <laughs> I, do, I don't give up. I just say, you know what? Okay, I don't have the, the best day. Can't be great every day. Right. So I go back to it, and I just kind of keep working through it, mm -hmm. and eventually, uh, something happens. And I think if you don't give up, you just keep. You know, you get so, those ideas. So it sounds like you were a musician more or less all your life, and you came right. upon the composing fairly recently. Right. What right. would you say to like a budding composer okay. or, or artist or somebody who really right. wanted to pursue their their music, their passion? Right. Well, I would say to anyone that if you have a passion for something and you believe in it, you believe in what you do, then you should follow your dream because uh, it's not easy being anyone anyone who's creative it's a, it's a difficult thing to be uh, in terms of um, you know making a career of it yeah but at first you have to believe in what you're doing and love it mm -hmm. because it's a part of you and that's very important that's the first thing fortunately uh, today uh, as opposed to a while ago uh, there are different ways to promote yourself mm -hmm. and a lot of it now is about social networking uh, It's about Twitter and Facebook yeah. which I'm I'm on Facebook and I'm on LinkedIn And I'm also going through this process of trying to find different ways to promote myself Yeah, um, but I think that there's much more available yeah. to people who want careers and to get yourself heard um, and so I think that's the advantage today. Yeah, literally, get yourself yeah. hurt with the right. music. Right. I mean, so, so what's been the most rewarding thing about this for you? I would say the most rewarding thing is to listen to what I hope and feel is beautiful music that I created. I mean, that's the most rewarding part of it. Yeah. Um, it 
it takes a lot to get to that point because even though you have these ideas which are great you have to work with those and then they have to be played properly yeah. and then they have to be put together properly and uh, there's certain structures that have to be just like anyone who writes right. uh, there's a structure to all of this yeah. and um, so what's been your biggest challenge or frustration so like if you're dealing with a musician maybe who's just not right getting it right and like right. you know what you want there right right have you had any of that or I have had that yeah. and I think very often if I mean not I shouldn't say often that you don't uh, that you have difficulties with people. I think it, it's not often, but uh, the trick is to be able to uh, hook up and to connect with that person, mm -hmm. that they're on the same wavelength as you, yeah. that they look at and view the music in the same way, that they feel it in the same way. I think that's very important. Uh, sometimes it's about personality. Sometimes yeah. personalities clash, yeah. and so you find the people who work for you and with you yep. and that is really a challenge uh, sometimes but if you find those people you just hold on to them yeah and yeah. that's even if there are only a few of them and uh, because it's 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 uh, it's it's an, it, it's not always easy to so you find, find a person so, so when you find a musician you have right. a piece and you, this cello it sounds like that right. worked out really well but if you find a musician somebody's playing a particular instrument that you've just written for right. what do you do do you interview them and say how do you work or play this piece and well let me see how you play this piece I right mean, I think well what <laughs> happened was with Mary uh, this cellist yeah. she came to my house I, I mean I gave her the music she came back to me we played it together together I, I really when I heard her play mm -hmm. I said to myself this woman really feels what she's playing yeah and so that was very inspirational and wonderful mm -hmm. and uh, also personality wise that worked and so actually because I met her since that piece for cello and piano I've written another six or seven other cello and piano duets because I was so inspired to do that because we work so well together mm -hmm. so now we just perform just cello and piano duets because it's very difficult bringing so in other musicians. So you do the piano and she does the cello? Yes. So you do it together? So you're yes. writing the piece and then you're playing it yes. together? Yes. Yes. So um, you just create concerts and then just... Well we find different venues mm. and we perform and what makes it so great is that uh, we, I have enough material enough music that it's just the two of us mm -hmm. and so we just play our duets because once you have to bring in other musicians to play your music it gets more complicated yeah I and it's imagine. logistically it's difficult yeah so that's why this has worked out very nicely for us hmm. you know so then so then going into the recording so you're writing then you're playing and then right. you're going into the recording studio and that's right. like that's a whole other right level it of is performance it is because you have to do a lot of takes like somebody doing a movie. I mean, you know, yeah. there are a lot of takes, and you hope that you get all the things that you need because at the moment when you're recording, you don't think about all those little things or those yeah. little notes that may not be right. Yeah. But you hope if you do enough takes that it works. And I've been, um, I've had a wonderful experience having recording done at my home, actually. And the recording engineer came in, and I had a great room to record um, and I, I love my piano I mean, it's just a, a, has a great sound to it and so he recorded there and it worked well for the small group the duets and the trios uh, the quartet I did somewhere else and then we edited it together but it's very exciting um, but again you know everyone gets a little nervous for the recording yeah, so it yeah. takes a number of times to you know feel comfortable and then really not be thinking about what's going on with the recording but actually f just thinking about the music and so, that takes a while so do you imagine you have an audience or do you have people come in when you're recording just so you can get the play feel like you're playing to an audience because no, you're sort of no, playing to, to, n to no one or yeah well you, you know that um, you know when you have uh, the people, I mean, it's, it's really, you're playing for each other. So mm -hmm. that's really all that okay. matters. Okay. It really has to be an ensemble, and you have to play together, and mm -hmm. you have to feel the same way, and you uh, have gone over all of this in rehearsals, and so hopefully it's all coming out okay. Yeah. Yeah. But if you have good people, um, it, it works well. It really does. And uh, then the, the hard part is actually editing. Um, 
because you're trying to find those takes that work yeah. for one measure that didn't work for another measure and so oh, you're you're patching wow. so you're really, editing you and really patching do cut and paste and that is uh, an art in itself yeah I can it imagine. really is and then of course then once then you have to balance out the levels yeah uh, the volume levels make sure everything's pretty so even really from one track to another where, where do you just give us a headline where do you want your where do you want to go with this this work well um, I want my music to be heard and I guess that uh, I would hope that people uh, would um, find that my music touches their heart and uh, I've actually had a number of my tracks played on WSHU and WMNR mm. so I have it have them played on radio and I'd like to just continue to to have people hear it and whether that be with social networking or whether that be with performing or whether yeah. that be with television or radio whatever works yeah but I that's very important to me because I, I I'm hoping that people will really be inspired by it oh that's great yeah. So if somebody was interested in, in hearing your music, right. uh, they could, I know they can look, listen to it on your website, right? Yes. Um, it's just www.sharonruckman.com, S-H-A-R-O-N-R-U-C-H-M-A-N.com. And I have samplers on there and, you know, various uh, other information about myself. Yeah, it's misleading. I'm glad you spelled it because Ruckman, it, it, sound, it, it looks <laughs> it like it sounds should like be Russian. It sounds like a K, R-U-C-K-M-A-N, yeah. but it's R-U-C-H-M-A-N. Yeah. Okay. That's yes. great. Yeah, so they can go on your website and learn more about you and also yes. play some samples if they yes, want to. Yes, absolutely. And, and then I'm going to have my second CD samplers on there pretty soon. Okay. Uh, because I just, I just, just received all of those CDs and now I have to do something. Well, with it's them. inspirational just to hear a little <laughs> bit about your, your creative process and thanks Thank for coming you. on the show. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. I'm Susan Shaner. Until next time with Community Forum. Thanks for joining us.